everyone! Good news, everyone. YouTube has restored my video. It's back on my channel. I want to start by thanking all the fans that supported me through this. It always blows my mind that you guys actually care about this shit. Already twice I've been through this mess, and I always think, you guys don't want to hear about this. You don't want to hear about the drama that happens behind the scenes. But then I'm amazed by the outpouring of support. I appreciate that you guys care about my channel. And so again, I say thank you to each and every one of you. And I'm glad you guys agree with me that this stuff is important because it is important to keep this stuff out there and accessible. After he deleted his YouTube channel, he came very close to completely deleting that video off the internet. It would be a shame if John Carlson's video only existed as a sentence on a Wikipedia page. That video is really one of those things where you have to see it to believe it. The story about everything that happened is something that we're going to be telling people for a long time. And those events, including that video that he made, they're so strange that no one will believe us unless the proof was out there. And I'm glad I found a way to upload it after he took it down because for a long time, my upload was the only way to watch that video. My video is linked in an Ars Technica article. There's also a Super Podcast Brothers episode that links to it. So believe me, it was important to keep that information out there. And I'll say it again in case somebody out there doesn't know, my channel is not monetized. I'm not making a dime off those views. And I've heard some people trying to defend John, saying he's just an honest guy trying to clean up his image, he doesn't want to be associated with the retro VGS anymore, but those people need to get their heads out of the sand. He's not protecting his image. If he ever wanted to protect his image, he wouldn't be starring in that stupid video. What he was trying to do in that video was maintain an illusion. This illusion that they've been working so hard on their prototype. And people should be able to see that so that they could see what his work ethic is like. Those of us who they called critics and haters, we're the only ones who are dishing out the truth and we still are. Why does the Retro VGS team always have to be taking down videos and pictures? Which I should remind you they posted in the first place. Why can't they just let the facts speak for themselves? Like I said before, it's so ironic that the Retro VGS guys were always harping about gaming history and how we need to preserve it. Well, you could start any time now by embracing your own. History will show that we haters were right all along, and the Retro VGS guys continue to do wrong. Go ahead and check my comments. John is still trying to take down videos and information. Doesn't this guy have anything better to do? I mean, I know I don't, but at least people like what I create in my free time. And speaking of maintaining your illusion, I mean maintaining your good name, it seems that Mike Kennedy has finally slithered out of his hole, and he's now pursuing a new career as a fiction writer. Or I don't know, something like that. He went on the Atari Age forum and just dumped a whole bunch of bullshit, claiming that he's actually the good guy. And we should all be his personal army against some con artists that he paid money to. Yeah, right, dude. Your story has more holes in it than your fucking head. I have no doubt that he paid a sketchy guy to build him a fake prototype that could fool Kickstarter. And he completely whitewashes all the censorship, all the deleted comments from the haters, and all the time he spent in hiding while his friends took the heat. Trust me, he was in on it. I mean, looking back on it, this is unreal. We were right to call Mike's Fantasy Retroland because it exists in another fucking dimension completely different from our own. Is this how people are raised? I hope I'm not the only one who was taught to take responsibility for my mistakes. Mike is acting like a kid who was caught with cigarettes. And the worst part is how he disappeared while all these people he called friends had to deal with the fallout from his mistakes. That has got to be one of the most disrespectful things I've ever seen. But did you notice something about his friends? Where are they now? Back when he was at the toy fair, they all rushed to defend him. But not anymore. When the whole scheme unraveled, he gave them silence. And now when he finally shows up, they're giving him silence. None of those big personalities are coming to his defense anymore. I have never seen someone self-destruct like Mike Kennedy has. But he earned every bit of it. And Mike, if any part of your story is true, let me tell you that nothing gives me more pleasure than knowing that you were screwed out of $10,000. If anyone deserved that, it's him. And I also like how he asked, Oh, please don't let this failure carry over to the magazine. That's totally different. Yeah, but it's the same guy behind it. In case you don't know, Mike, let me just tell you, this failure is going to haunt you. If you need more proof of that, go ask your buddy John Carlson. And I'm not the one in charge of that. You've soiled your public image. And that's a choice you made. And you're a big boy now, and you're going to have to deal with it. Alright, guys, and I know I devote too much time to this subject. But you should know that while I was dealing with that whole copyright thing with John, I started making another Retro VGS video. It's going to be short, but it's taking a lot of time, and I'm very proud of it. It should be up very soon, and if it's the last video I ever make about this topic, I'll be very happy to call it the bookend to the series. 
I don't want to overhype it, but I think it is one of my best videos, and you guys are going to have a lot of fun with it. Until next time, thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and I'll see you guys next time.